Hello, ladies. Thanks for tuning in today for One Simple Step, another day to discuss with a pregnant mom about her experiences during first trimester. Please welcome Jacqueline to today's episode. Welcome, Jacqueline. Hi. I love <laughs> Jacqueline is in her beginning her second trimester of her second pregnancy. She has a little boy, Oliver, and she is married to Mike. And so Jacqueline, I love having you on today because I think sometimes we forget about the first trimester. We focus on delivery and third trimester. And then by the time we get to third trimester, we're like, what was that first doctor's visit? What, what was I experiencing besides a lot of nausea and fatigue? <laughs> but today I just want to um, ask you a few questions. How has your first trimester of your second pregnancy gone? And how does it compare to your first pregnancy? So my first trimester for this second pregnancy was completely opposite of um, my pregnancy with Oliver. And so this first trimester, I've had a lot of nausea, um, no morning sickness, but a lot of nausea. And um, it's just a whole new ballgame because I have a toddler running around the house. And so I'm just feeling a lot more fatigued and things like that. And when I was first pregnant with Oliver, um, I didn't have morning sickness at all. I was a little tired, but not as tired as I am this time. Um, so it's just been completely different. And so I was like, I'm ready for the second trimester so I can just not feel this nausea like I had been. And I really like started feeling super nauseous when I was about mm, four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so from four weeks until about, I'd say about, 13, it was a little spotty in 14 weeks. Um, I was feeling that nausea, which was just kind of awful. And it was super, super hot <laughs> this summer. And I think that had a lot to do with it too. <laughs> Definitely. What did, what helped your nausea? So I talked to my doctor and she said, really, um, some, one of the vitamin B vitamins, I think she said it was like B6. Uh -huh. So I tried that. And then I would like bomb off of like my parents or my grandmother and go over to their house in the air conditioning. And that really helped a lot too. Excellent. Well, how many weeks are you right now in this current pregnancy? I'm 16. I'll be 17 weeks on Wednesday. Excellent. Tell me, when did you first know that you were pregnant or what was the sign? So the first time I was pregnant, with Oliver, I had absolutely no idea. Um, <laughs> we, we'd been trying for a while. And so I had, I was late. I was about five days late and I was like, Oh, I'll try it. And, and then we were pregnant. We were super surprised. The second time around, I felt like I knew, like, I want to say a week after conception. Um, I know it sounds a little funny, but I just kind of had that feeling uh -huh. in the time that I knew for this second pregnancy that I was pregnant was when I did not want my morning coffee. Um, that was when I, I love coffee. And so I was like, oh, wow. And so that's when I knew. <laughs> yes. Yes. When did you take a pregnancy test? So the second time around, we, I was just, I had this feeling that I was pregnant early on. So I did take a pregnancy test about mm, two weeks after conception and, or what I thought was conception and, um, it came back negative. So I was like, okay, well, I tested way too early. So I waited closer until, um, around the start of when I was supposed to have my period. And I actually tested, I want to say like three days before, um, I was expected to start my period and it was very faintly saying I was pregnant. So I went and got the digital pregnancy test and it first said I was pregnant. And then I waited about a week and a half after my missed period and took one third final test before my doctor's appointment. And then it confirmed that I was pregnant. So excellent. How many weeks were you when you had your first doctor's appointment? Because I know that can vary from doctor's offices to doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience? So my, um, with both Oliver and this pregnancy, um, they had me come in about six weeks. Uh-huh. Excellent. Can you explain to a first time mom 
or a new mom what to expect on that first doctor's visit? What happened at yours? So um, I have two different experiences um, for that. So when I, for my first pregnancy, when I went in, um, they just had me do a urine sample and um, just to confirm the pregnancy. And then I had a well woman's exam right then and there. So I um, had a pap smear and that was basically it. And they sent me home with some information and not much happened for that um, appointment. For the second pregnancy, when I went in, I was expecting to do the same thing and I'm, I'm seeing a different doctor. So um, she, they did a urine test to confirm the pregnancy. And then after that, she actually did a vaginal ultrasound and um, just so we could see the baby and we could actually just see a ba the baby. It was kind of like a little blob, but then inside that blob, you could see like a circle that was flashing and that was the heartbeat. So it was really cool to see that. I was not expecting that at all. Um, and so that's the only, those are the only two things that they did for this time around. Excellent. And it's during COVID. So your husband was able to go to that visit. Is that right? He was able to go, um, but he, we chose just not to go, um, okay. just the safety of, right. you know, everybody else that was coming into the office and he had to fill out a special COVID form if he were to come. So we're just trying to stay a little safer during this time. And it's just me going to those appointments. Right, right. And with being pregnant during COVID, can you share a couple of other things that you're doing, maybe work-wise and life-wise and choices that you're making just to be safe? And take the extra precautions because for everybody it's different, but you want to be com comfortable during this time of uncertainty. Yeah, so um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to um, work from home. I'm a teacher. And so I was um, able to transfer over to our online school temporarily for this year. So the, I'm working online right now as a teacher and it's been really great. My husband's also working from home um, and his company's having him stay working at home right now. Um, and as if he's able to stay home, we're going to do that. And then um, for child care, we're very fortunate that we have different family members that can watch Oliver throughout the day while we're, while we're both working. Um, so we're really just keeping everything in the family um, just to keep everything safer for everybody. Um, my husband and I are a little bit more um, conservative during this time. So we do grocery pickup. Um, we don't really go out and about if we're going to go do things, we're doing things outside at the park. Um, we're doing like little day trips, like in driving and then getting out of the car and just kind of looking at the scenery. So, and just kind of doing, trying to do some fun things at home. Yes. So we're, we're not really out and about doing things right now. Excellent. So really being safe and cautious, but still being creative and getting outside. So you still give yeah. yourself for mental sanity, a break and a change of scenery. Yes. Yes, definitely. Let's see. Were you taking a prenatal vitamin before you got pregnant or what, what are you have been your habits with that? So, um, I did, um, we were actively trying for both pregnancies. So I was taking, um, my prenatal vitamins about three months before we started to try. Um, and so the prenatal vitamins that I take, um, it's, a uh, Oh, it's um like a multivitamin where it has like minerals and different things like that. But so it's heavy on that. And um my first doctor had actually told me to um instead of taking the 400 milligrams of folic acid, she said to take 800 milligrams. Um, she said it's not gonna hurt anything, but it can help certain things. So the prenatal vitamin that I take does have 800 milligrams of folic acid, and then on top of that. I buy a, um, a DHA supplement that has some omega-3 in it for that brain development too. So um, every day I take the prenatal vitamins and then the DHA omega-3 um, just to play it safe. Because sometimes the vitamins, if you really look at them, they don't have a lot of that omega-3 fatty, mm -hmm. um, fatty stuff that you, you really need right now. So, and especially with the DHA, and I did a lot of like you know, just kind of researching and they just said it's better for the baby's brain development to take those. So that's what I've been taking. And I took those three months before we started and then all the way through. And I ended up taking a, um, it was a, the same brand of um, DHA, but it, it was a postpartum one. 
Um, so that way, if you're choosing to breastfeed and things like that, um, the baby's getting those nutrients too. Excellent. Excellent. I know a lot of concerns for first trimester is miscarriage. And so I know 80% of miscarriages happen in that first trimester. So there's a lot of things weighing on a woman's mind in that first trimester. One of those concerns is bleeding. And of course, it's always good if you have a concern to call your doctor, even the peace of mind of the doctor saying everything's okay. The doctor knows you in your pregnancy. So let's just put that out there. If you have a concern, always make a phone call. So women are very concerned about bleeding. What advice have you been told during um, your first trimester, especially about bleeding or what experiences have you had? Um, so I personally haven't had any experiences with bleeding, but both of my doctors that I've had um, said any spotting or bleeding to call right away in the office that I um, go to has like an after hours nurses line that you can call. And I've actually utilized that for um, other questions that I had throughout this second pregnancy and even the first. Um, but they always encouraged, like if you see anything just to call right away. Yep, that is good. And I think as women, we need to start practicing advocating for ourselves and asking questions through pregnancy, in delivery, postpartum, taking care of babies. So. Um, don't feel ashamed. Even if you call and they say, oh, that's normal. Don't feel like oh, I shouldn't have called. Again, I can't stress that enough that if it's a concern or a question, go ahead and ask your doctor or your healthcare provider for that advice, because it just helps. And it helps you sleep at night too, knowing the peace of mind. I've done that with my kids as well. So if again, that's kind of that mother's instinct or that gut feeling that you got to go with sometimes. And it's very helpful. And some of those for women, it's building that instinct and that ability to step up and do that. So highly recommend that. Let's see another question. Have you had any pain during the first trimester? Because the uterus grows 500 times its size during pregnancy. And there's lots of hormone changes and the body, especially first pregnancy, there can be some cramping and things like that. Did you experience any of that in your first trimester? I did. Um, with both pregnancies, I did experience um, dull menstrual like cramps. Um, and so the very first time around, it was very like worrisome. And so I did call because that was just something I just didn't know about. So I figured I'm the type of person I just call. And so my doctor's office, like probably knew my number by heart, <laughs> but, um, I, it, I did, I mean, in, and everybody's like, don't worry, that's normal. That's like your uterus and things are changing. And I have, um, I have had those kind of cramping, um, this second pregnancy, um, more so in the first trimester right now, it's kind of dull, but, um, for the second trimester, just kind of like the end of my first trimester, beginning of my second trimester, I did feel a little bit more pressure. Um, and I knew just because I've been pregnant before that that was just my uterus and I could feel that's how my body reacted the first time that my son had a big growth spurt when I was pregnant the first time. And the first time I was pregnant, it was around this time where I got um, extreme pain mm -hmm. um, where it felt like I was having a hard time breathing. So I called and went in right away and they looked at everything. Everything was healthy. They just said my son was going through a really weird growth spurt and it was just squishing <laughs> and down. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this time, but I did have light menstrual like kind of cramps mm -hmm. and everything's been fine so far with both pregnancies. So Good, good. And again, as your body's changing, you've got lots of progesterone. Your heart is beating more. Your blood volume is increasing. So this is going to affect your body in different ways. And again, every pregnancy is different. Even if this is your third or fourth time pregnant, everyone is different. So it's the answer. It depends is a lot of times that the answer uh, for a lot of questions, but again, just take, I'm glad that you went ahead and called for that peace of mind. So Every experience is different. Have you been feeling fatigue in this first trimester? I did. And I think I felt more fatigued this pregnancy because I have a toddler running around the house. Um, but you just, you mean, you do what you got to do. And so if you're a first time pregnant mother, um, sleep, because 
if this is your second time around, like you're not going, you just don't have that luxury to sleep. Um, so I would say the fatigue is wearing off now. And I'm kind of in that, my doctor said that gray area where I know I'm pregnant, but I don't feel pregnant yet. Um, and so I'm feeling really good right now. That's great. What are some foods or snacks that have been helpful for you? So with the first time around my first pregnancy, um, really, I wasn't having any, I didn't have cravings. Um, I didn't have nausea. So there wasn't really anything that I did differently. Um, I don't eat like sushi or things like that. Um, so really my doctor gave me a list of things that she said, you know, stay away from these things and, and stuff like that, which I did. Um, I do stick away from caffeine. Um, that's just one of the things that I've always done. I don't drink coffee when I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm really craving something, I'll have like decaf green tea mm -hmm. or things like that. The second pregnancy, um, I was nauseous. And so I would be snacking on really dry land things like the like saltine crackers with no salt. Um, fruit actually sounded good to me. Uh -huh. Um, so I've been, so I would snack on that and then just sipping on water throughout the day just really, really helped. So right now I'm not feeling super nauseous, but, um, I do, I am more sensitive to food this second time around. Um, I am getting like more heartburn with certain things. So I'm needing to have more fruits and vegetables and just kind of a blander diet. So sometimes at night I'm cooking two separate meals, one for myself and then one for, my husband and my son, but <laughs> yes, those different things that you have to do to adapt and manage yes. the nausea is definitely understandable and frequent snacks. At least for me, it was just keeping something on my belly. So I just kept mm -hmm. that around. And I know again, protein can help a lot of times too. So those are a couple of things to keep trying and alternating. And if that morning sickness is pretty severe, just finding what works for you and Sometimes it's a matter of trial and error and just seeing what you can keep down during this too. Um, make sure that as you're going through your first trimester, if you're losing weight, you have a lot of vomiting and nausea, and nausea, that you're in contact with your doctor about that too, because um, the risk of dehydration is real and um, losing weight. So again, just communicating with your doctor. And I tell women this, the pregnancy brain pregnancy fog is real. So journaling things down is so, so important and taking that journal to every appointment with you, because at least for me, when I walked in, it's like my mind goes blank. And as soon as I get back to the car, I'm like, I didn't ask this question. So have you found that helpful writing down some questions? Yes. Yes, I do. Like when I know I have an upcoming appointment, I'll just like put in my phone and notes, just questions I have or topics that I want to remember. And I mean, I forget when I go to the doctor, when I'm taking my son to the doctor and I have questions for the pediatrician. So I've always written things down in my first pregnancy. I would handwrite things down. And I had a huge list this time. I, it's not as bad. <laughs> I have like one question, but I always write them down because I forget. That's great. Have you exercised in the first trimester? I have. So, um, my first pregnancy, I did not, um, I think I took on that. Oh, I'm eating for two and <laughs> like that. And so, um, I just kind of knew how my body reacted to my pregnancy the first time. And the second time around, I, I knew that I wanted to make certain changes mm -hmm. and exercise was one of them. So the first trimester, I mean, the nausea was so awful, but I didn't want to do like the prenatal, um, yoga that I had been doing or things like that. So I went out for a walk, um, whether it was like six in the morning or during my lunch break, I would go for, you know, like a 30 to 40 minute walk and just listen to a podcast. And, um, that's just what I would do. And, um, as I started and feeling better, you know, it's turned into more of like a power walk and I'm really like going for that cardio and things like that. But even when I was nauseous, I did, I forced myself to get up and to go do that because it just made me feel better. And I actually yeah. found that helped my nausea a little bit too. That's a good thing because a lot of women 
have good intentions and then that first trimester hits and the nausea and the fatigue hit. But again, I think that's a word of advice too, is just getting out, even if it's a 10 minute walk, that just to get the blood flowing, get outside, fresh air, clear your mind. I think there's a mental aspect as well that is very important for exercising. Yeah. And I know like in, um, like we live in a state where it snows in the winter time. And so like, I know I'm not going to be going out walking because of ice and I don't want to risk falling. So I have like walking DVDs that I've bought. And so, I mean, I'll just be doing those in the winter time, but I really just, I think I learned so much from my first pregnancy that this time I know exactly how my body's going to react and, and really what I need to do. And for me, it's also like just that, time for myself um, because my son's still sleeping and my husband's working. And so it's nice to just get up and just do that right away for myself too. That's great. And the ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, recommends 150 minutes per week for pregnant women to exercise. Now, it a moderate exercise where you can still carry on a conversation with somebody else and breaking those down to 10 minute increments um, as you're building up or 30 minute increments. And again, taking into consideration how you're feeling. So those are a couple of the tips that are suggested and also making sure that you eat before you exercise and drinking water, staying well hydrated, and then don't overheat because that's really important, especially in that first trimester. And again, I love the ACOG as a great resource for information. So if you're concerned about exercise, you can just type on in ACOG and then exercise. And there's frequently asked questions because there's a ton of information on the internet, but there's a lot of opinions. And so you really want to be sure that you're getting your information from the right place. So as we're discussing exercise today, that's one of the things to keep in mind. So have you found any apps or resources that you've liked that have helped you through your pregnancies? Um, you know, I'm, I'm um, kind of a worry wart. And so sometimes the more information I have, the more what ifs I have. Yeah. Um, but I do use an app baby center. Um, and it puts in, you know, like when your babies do and things like that, and you get that fun little notification every week that says, you know, what changes are going on in your body, what's happening with your baby. And it gives like the size and things like that. And then you can take like a little bumpy where you can like take a picture of your stomach and things like that. And that's what I've used. Um, I try not to go out and look for too many things mm -hmm. just cause I am that what if person. Um, but I think baby center is kind of fun. It's nice to look and see every week and they compare your baby to like a fruit or vegetable. And it's fun to see that size. That's neat. So that is neat. What about when did you tell your friends and family or really kind of make your pregnancy announcement? Because that I know is a concern. Again, some women are like eight weeks, some are 12 weeks uh, where is your comfort? And again, there's no black and white answer. It's just interesting mm -hmm. to hear people's experience because there's two sides. Some women say, wait, 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 wait. And then other women are like, but we need support and help during this first trimester because it's fatiguing, it's exhausting, there's nausea, and you've got a lot of concerns. So what felt most comfortable for you and your family? Um, so because we're in a pandemic, we did this a little bit differently. So with my first um, I was very conservative because um, miscarriage was something that I was worried about. Um, so we did wait. We told immediate family after my first appointment to confirm the pregnancy. So we told them and then we waited to tell our friends and coworkers until I was in the second trimester the mm -hmm. first time around. Um, this time around, because we're in a pandemic, it's a lot different. Um, so I, we told our immediate family right away, even before my first doctor's appointment. Um, and we still have not told um, friends yet. We're just kind of waiting um, just because of timing and things like that. But um, I was in a situation where I had to um, provide a medical report for, for work um, to uh, even work online. So I did have to tell coworkers and things like that a lot earlier than I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, really wanted to wait till the second trimester to tell, you know, coworkers and things like that. But given the pandemic, um, that was information that I needed to be able to work from home. Um, my husband hasn't shared yet with his work, work colleagues that I'm pregnant yet. We're going to wait to find out the gender and then we'll, 
we'll tell everybody after that point. So that's great. Again, it's everybody's journey is different. I think gaining information from other people's experiences help too, as you make that informed decision too. That's excellent. Is there any other advice that you would share with a first time mom that is in her first trimester or second trimester of her pregnancy? You know, I think just really listening to your body and just not being afraid to ask questions and um, don't really go down that rabbit hole of looking up something online. Um, I, I did that and you find things that are really scary and you find things that you're like, well, this could be it. And if you have a question, it's just best to call the doctor or the nurse hotline just to get that confirmation. Um, so really, it's just a personal thing. Um, but that's what I would suggest and just really enjoy it and try not to worry so much about the what ifs. Um, with my first, I was always a worry wart, but this time around, I'm, my life's different. I'm busy and I, I have my son to take care of. And so I'm not as worried. And so this pregnancy is just really flying by. So I just say to enjoy it and take in every moment, even the bad ones. <laughs> That's beautiful. It is. It's a new stage of life and it's really adapting to everything. Excellent. Anything else that you'd like to share? Not that I can think of. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for sharing today and your experiences. Again, this is so important. Again, as we focused in on the first trimester. And if you want more information, I've recently released my book, Connecting with Your Body Throughout Pregnancy. And I love having worked with pregnant women through the years, combining their stories so that you can learn your parts listen to your body and love your delivery. So all these aspects are so important in preparing for your delivery and enjoying your pregnancy and modifying things so that you can be strong, move with greater freedom and really connect to your whole body, including your pelvic floor. So make sure to check that out at, it's available on Amazon in ebook and print form as well. And if there's more information that you're seeking, one simple step dot today, I love just empowering women to take one step towards health and healing, whether that's pregnancy, postpartum, or any stage of life. It's an amazing journey. And thanks so much, Jacqueline, for joining today and sharing your advice, your insight, and your own experiences. I think it's going to be really helpful for women as they listen. Thank you. Have a great day, and I hope that you're able to take one simple step today towards health and healing.